All right, we got Slimer out of here. Looks like those hot dogs were actually useful. This is Rex, and you're watching the Brick Ninjas. Today, uh, it's Halloween this month, it's October, and I have wanted the Ghostbusters Lego set for a long time. Finally got around to getting it. This thing looks super cool. It looks huge. It looks like there's so much playability. There's so many different things you can do with it. I really cannot wait to build this. It's probably gonna take a day or two to do this. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, as you can see, it is just humongous. Huge, it's big. It's 4,634 pieces. And it's set number 76 or 75827, Ghostbusters headquarters, or it's called the Firehouse headquarters. Um, I'm loving the way this thing looks. I like how it looks like Peter has uh, the Peter Venkman minifigure has two faces, and it looks like the ghosts have uh, two heads or something. Because uh, if you look on the top and the sides, you see that they have two different looks. That looks cool. I love the exposed brick on the side. This thing looks amazing. I have the Ghostbuster Ecto One from the original. Ghostbusters um, Lego set, which I'll bring in and probably build again just for kicks and giggles. Um, but this thing looks amazing. I love all the ghosts that come with it, and Dana, and the Ghostbusters, um, Winston, and Peter, and Ray, and Egon. Um, the back, I guess it closes and opens the whole set. The back shows you a lot more of what it does. You can have uh, Slimer. In the kitchen, eating pizza, Slimer coming out of the toilet, which would be disgusting and terrible if you ask me. Um, get the guys chilling out in the in the kitchen, eating some food, playing pool with toaster, the old finger in the toaster trick, um, the man eating toaster trick. Um, we're ready to believe you. There's uh, Tully with his funny little hat on from Ghostbusters 2, or no, from one, from one. Um, and then the, here's a part from part two though, where Egon and Winston. Uh, Egon and Ray were in the, the, the room, the dark room, uh, exposing pictures, and they started on fire from Vigo. Um, the, well, you got the, uh, the Carpathian. Anyways, um, there's Slimer in the kitchen, and you got, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, Janine. You know, we got one, and then they're putting it in a trap. Uh, it's got the little bar that can go down the firehouse bar. Um... This just looks super cool and I can't wait. Let's go ahead and get started with this thing. Okay, let's count all this up and see what we got.
42 bags. 42 bags, 4,634 Legos. Let's get started. <laughs> This is the completed version of the Lego Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters, number 75827. Um, it's an awesome set, all 4,634 pieces of it. I've had a lot of fun building it, and I've had even more fun playing it with my, my children. 
Uh, took it home right after I built it, and we had a blast playing it. We've played with it every day since. Um, I spent some time kind of getting to know it, and it's a really cool set. Um, I can't recommend it more. It's worth the every you know the price you pay for it, but you better pick it up soon. It'll probably go out of production in about 12 months, um, if not less than that. And then the prices go really high for these kind of sets. Um, let's take a look inside now. All right, now here is the interior of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Um, the stairs, this is the, the containment unit from the film. They have a little red and green light above that. It doesn't work, but it looks cool. And you got these stairs and a more staircase here and railings. It goes out to there. And then what's really cool on this side so you got a fire escape and it goes all the way up to each door and each one of these doors opens a little stud handle as you can see pretty cool little windows above each door oh, not that one I guess just this one pretty cool little railings and everything and our, like I said just open it up there you go Okay, I start at the bottom. Here is Janine hanging out right there. And you can see there's a cool toolbox back here, and there's actually tools on there. Like what looks like a wrench, a tire iron, a drill, um, a screwdriver. The inside, there's like an oil can and some other nifty little things. Pretty cool. They have like newspapers and boxes laying around and a lamp. Um, I really like her her desk. As you can see, it's got she's playing Galaga um, back from the uh, old Atari days. And as you can see, she's got a telephone and a cool looking little lamp. Sorry about the lighting. It's like a lamp right here, a letter stamped envelope stuff on the sides. Pretty cool, pretty detailed desk. Um, it's the underside of it. Let me look, show you the front. It actually looks like a desk. Pretty cool, huh? And it just fits on these two little studs. They're easy to take off and put on. Because if you really wanted to, you could park the uh, Ectomobile in here. And then there's uh, the desk that Peter Venkman sat in during the movie. And they have these cool little doors that open up just like from the film. See, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to show you a picture from here, but they have a nice little uh, tribute to Harold Ramis on that board. In the background, you can see they have what looks to be like uh, water or something, and a radio, and a file cabinet, and a little chair swivels. Um, they have a bell, which is pretty cool, and then I thought um, what was really neat was these, this nice touch with these hanging lights. And you can actually see they have clear pieces in them with a little white thing in there. Like it's supposed to be like a light bulb. And they just hang. And of course here's Lewis and Dana. We'll talk about those later. And the front door here opens. That door. And then the big door actually opens. So just like in the film. And these close. They're big square doors, but on the front they have a nice arch. There's another door there and some windows. Um, this was really fun to put together and really, really cool. I really, really enjoyed it. Ah, these were cool. Um, and I showed you before the trick on how to put the stickers on with the little orange piece they give you. And I highly recommend that for putting these on if you get this set. Because trying to center the stickers on these, these uh, things was not easy with, uh, without a tool. So these are like their closets, and you can actually store, let's see if I can find what I can put in there, you can actually store proton packs in here, and then close the door, and it will stay closed. And you can, you know, set up the doors however you want, each one opens, and actually, you can actually fit, I mean, you can fit a, a full minifigure in there if you wanted, it's pretty cool. Um, and then let's go up. You can actually have a character show you here. The cool way of doing this is you just pull this up, 
put a little character on there. I'll do that in just a second here. All right, I'll put Janine up here, and you just let it slide, and she goes all the way down like that. Like I said, you can just hold it pretty sturdy with your hands, and it'll, it'll turn by itself. Put her up here, and then... Whee! Pretty cool. Don't know why ghosts would need to wash his hands. Uh, there's actually a shower in there, and the detail is incredible to me. The red and blue are like the hot and cold sh uh, shower, the soap, shampoo, little shower nozzle up there, little uh, drain. Um, the toilet looks pretty cool. I like it's got a seat and a cover and a lid, and there's no poop or anything in there. Um, and then they've got this cool little thing you make to look like it's flushing, and there's some windows. A mirror, a sink, it's got even some soap next to it. Pretty cool. I'm go over this way. We've got some windows. This is the room that the Ghostbusters stay in. Pretty cool. Let's we'll see if I can kind of get a different angle here. The detail is incredible. I like the, uh, I mean, it looks like beds. So they've got little pillows on them and everything and blankets. There's a big window. And then this is going to be like part of the kitchen, as you'll see here. They've got um, a Stay Puff Ghostbusters arcade game. It's pretty cool. And then they got like a furnace here. So there's like a little little fire in there. And there's a table with the uh, the old man eating toaster trick. Gets you every time. You got some slime here. Let me see. And a coffee mug. Some slime coming out of the toaster. You got three chairs. All right. So, and the refrigerator even has like some food in it. There's a pizza in there. So this is the refrigerator. There's actually like notes and stuff on there. It's pretty cool. And inside is a piece of pizza or a big pizza pie. Uh, like a frozen pizza. And then in here, they have like a little piece of cheese and like milk. So that's kind of cool. But there's little details in here and there's nothing on the bottom. Here's one of the chairs that they have in the kitchen. Um, kind of a cool design. I wish the studs were on the bottom so you could actually sit people in the seats and have them stick. But for whatever reason, they made them like this. And there's four of them. There's just two freestanding. Um, rest of the kitchen. These little Coke cans are really cool. As you can see, we'll start from the top. Has some clear blue things, a bowl, a pot. Go down, looks like you got a salt and pepper shaker. A bowl of cereal, two cans of Coke. Then below that you have a uh, oven, which looks really neat. And a box of pizza, coffee, um, craft, a uh, frying pan, and another coffee mug. On top of like some drawers and looks like a, an actual oven. Or not, sorry, I should say stove. Let's move that coffee mug for a minute. Looks like a little stove there. The heat goes up in there, little drawers. I want to show you the top of these uh, Coke cans. I thought this was a cool little touch. They put actually, these are not stickers, these are printed on. Just thank you for not making these stickers like oh, I, like I said, I'm not a fan of the stickers. But uh, it looks cool, it's like an actual like, little tap for the can, and it looks like a Coke can. So uh, that was a little cool attention to detail. So I just want to show, the, point that out. All right, so up from the kitchen, let's see if there's anything like, the light they got hanging down, that's cool. Again, just like the bottom. Um, it's just amazing to me. All the drawers do open up. As you can see, they, well, they do. There we go. And it just looks really cool and detailed. Just really amazed at how well they did this. All right, going up, this is like Egon's. Let me move uh, Ray. Um, like little science area. So here's a table, and we got the news on it, and it looks like a little beaker of slime. Behind that, you can see they got a toolbox and some kind of green box on a shelf. A little computer element, uh, some kind of red substance, blue substance above that, and purple, and a radio. And that must be like the the, mold, the molds, spores, and fungus that Egon collects. Uh, next to that, you have like a dartboard with uh, looks like a scorecard next to it. Two little darts sticking out of the wall. You got a computer monitor with, uh, looks like those dogs, those demon dogs from the movie. Um, pretty cool. Little windows out there. Then we have all these like cool little gadgets up here. On this one, a yellow container and some kind of measuring device. On the wall, you got like computer racks of computer servers or something. 
we got some slime in a dome here. Another computer. I like that they put Vigo the Carpathian on there. Uh, that's from Ghostbusters 2. They did a lot of mixing with that. I thought it was pretty cool that they put Ghostbusters 1 and 2 in a lot of this set. Um, pretty cool. And then over here, there is a pool table or a billiard table. And on the back, you can see they have like a New York um, a little <clears throat> picture or something. And then behind Egon, they have like a map of the city of Manhattan. Oh, that was pretty cool. The pool cue up there on the wall, and I got Winston holding the pool, cu pool cue here. And you can see even the balls are colored, and they have like what are fake little pockets. Let me show you how this looks. Um, this is pretty cool. Just the detail that goes into all these little things is just amazing to me. Um, I thought the pockets were a nice touch, and they just fit on top of two little studs to stay in one place. Um, oh, and over here we have the uh, photo lab where they, in Ghostbusters 2, when they um, took pictures of Vigo's painting, they were developing them in a little dark room in the firehouse. And this is that dark room. And next to it they have the fire extinguisher. Remember, if you remember Winston coming in and helping um, was it Ray and, and Egon when it was started on fire? Here's a little magnifying glass. That is super cool to me because it actually works. Uh, here's like a, what you'd hold the photo with like a, like a little device and then you put the photo and paper in the liquid and develop it. There's a camera right there and they got like extra film stock and chemicals on the wall right there. This is uh, so super cool. Even like the tiling on the bottom, they have white and green. Um, I like the tiling in the bathroom is black and white. And uh, there's that pole again. This is like super cool. Really cool set. Uh, me and my, my kids have played with this for hours and they love it. They love going through all the different set parts of the place and doing different things. Um, super cool. I like how um, you have to kind of close it a certain way, but I like how the whole thing does close up. The table that I'm, I'm shooting this on is a little uneven, so it might take me a minute here. But it, it even clamps closed. And that's the outside. Uh, one of the issues I do have with this, and I've kind of found that it happens when I have it on an uneven surface, like the table I have this on bows a little bit in the center, and there's so many pieces here and everything's like flexing that it's pulling kind of different parts off and on. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty solid. When you put it on a nice flat surface, it stays together. Here's the back side of it. Just kind of give you an idea what it looks like back here. I don't know why they didn't, that's like one piece that I'm like, it's the only piece that's not filled in. But uh, whatever. Uh, here's the brick and the architecture work on the outside. I like how they have some of the exposed brick. It looks really cool to me. And the windows and the hinges. All that good stuff. There's the dark room with the uh, the white pieces. That's super cool. Here's the top. Like a little air conditioning unit or something up here. And you can have the little pieces play up here and stuff. It's pretty cool. Alright, here's the outside of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Um, it comes with this pretty cool looking um, like street light and everything out there. And this is the front. There's those doors I was showing you and push in and close and stuff. Look inside. Um, after you can, you have to pull the whole thing closed. So that's cool. And then they have like these nice little yellow corners. Like uh, if you look at the real picture, that's that's what the firehouse looks like. And it has the um, little lights. They don't light up, but they look cool. Uh, this goes up and down, so you can actually see the real firehouse number. From the movie and they even have this little nice gold thing right up here if you look at pictures of the real house this is pretty authentic i mean they did a really good job you even have a little sticker right here a dedication of the building and i like the uh, ghostbuster sign i just wish it was a little bigger i feel like it should have been bigger which is kind of funny from the movie but um it would have been nice if it was a little bit bigger but it's cool it works nonetheless and here's the outside there's the bedroom and you can see the masonry work, it's really cool. And then here's the uh, the billiard room. And the dark room over there. Pretty cool. I like all the detail that went into this. Here's that kind of popping up. If I have it on a flat surface, it doesn't do that. It's just this table. Um, I just, all the little details are so cool on the little corners here. 
And I have to say, I was really looking forward to when I was going to have to build this. This was so cool. I love how that that works. I mean, it looks like a real building kind of from that period, you know, the 40s, maybe the 30s and 40s when this was built. Uh, super cool. Again, they have more mason work out here. Now, next to the street light, where it says one way, and you have the three colors of the light, there's actually a trash can, a little Lego trash can right here. And I think that is super, super cool. It's just three grill pieces, or sorry, four grill pieces connected to uh, a stud with studs on all the sides. There's a door right there and more windows. I have like a little window unit here for air conditioning. They have another one right there. I think that's super cool. Uh, over here they have some pink slime bubbling up out of the ground, which I thought that was a really cool touch to add in there. Um, this is a super cool set next to the, uh, I don't know what's my favorite, if I like this one better or if I like the sand crawler better because they're both so playable, so cool, so detailed and really fun. Like I said, me and my kids play with these and have a lot of fun just making the Ghostbusters go on little adventures. Um, if you can get a chance to get this set, I'd highly recommend it. I mean, I think you could just have this set and probably be happy for a long time. Um, it is 4,600 pieces, took a while to build, but uh, man, you can see all the detail in there. All right, let's talk about the actual minifigures. This is Ray. He's pretty cool. He's got a proton pack that comes on and off. You can see in the back there. And the proton pack looks pretty good. I have the other, um, the Ecto-1. And uh, pretty much the same. Uh, the only character that's really different in this set is... Um, uh, Peter. Okay, and then uh, of course Ray has two faces. He's got a little worried face. Ooh. And each head is specific to each character, which is pretty cool. And I like how they even have like the ghost on the arm and the elbow pads and everything. They put a lot of detail into these um these figures. Here's Egon. Like little black gloves. Here's the back. And of course he has he has two faces also. He got a scared face. You're going to melt off my face. Turn down the power on your proton pack. Your energy stream, whatever he said. Winston. Winston Zedmore. He looks pretty cool. I think they did a good job on him. He looks pretty calm and cool. Um, he has two faces. His uh, uh, other face. Pretty cool. Excellent. Here's Peter Venkman. He's got two heads. He's got one that's been slimed on. And his uh, his shirt is all slimed. So when you turn his head, his shirt's still slimed. But I'll show you his other face in just a minute. I have uh, three different versions of him. I have the Lego Dimensions version, the Ecto-1 version, and then the uh, Firehouse version. And um, he's the only one with slime on it. The hair is different on... Um, the Ecto-1 version versus the LEGO Dimensions versions, but this is the same as the LEGO Dimensions version. Let me show you his other face. Hello. I'm Peter. I'm Dr. Venkman. Right, pretty cool. Slime shirt. And then they got Janine. We got one! And she's got two faces also. She pretty much has Han Solo's hair. It works. But that's the same here, I think, as Han Solo and some other minifigures, but it works. I like her shirt, the plaid. It's, you know, direct from the original Ghostbusters movie. Black pants, pretty cool. We have Dana. There is no Dana, only Zool. And this is when she is uh, transformed or possessed by Zool. And she's got two faces, too. She's got her, her angry Zool face and her kind of, uh, I'm just Zool face. <laughs> And this is her dress. It's pretty cool. Goes down to her legs. And her hair. Pretty cool. Did a good job with that. Kind of like curly Sigourney Weaver hair from the 80s. Lewis Tully. He has two faces. A happy face. And then a key master or gatekeeper face um, and the same shirt no 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 difference there what's cool though is they, add, they added another head for him and I'll get that in just a second 
This is the head from Ghostbusters 1 where he's uh, possessed. And he looks pretty funny there. Let me see if I can get this better exposed. Looks pretty funny. I like how they put this little thing on his head. Um, it's only got one face, but it's pretty cool. And I put his other head right there. Just so you can kind of get an idea. I think it's really funny. So you can set him up there in the lab and have Egon asking questions. Yes, sir. Anyways. Alright, they have the library ghost in here. And I like the book she's reading is Magical Paths to Fortune and Power. With a little Lego brick on there. As if a ghost needs... Uh, fortune and power when they are a ghost, when you're dead. That's, you know, don't really do much there. She can hold the book uh, with one hand and then the other hand kind of props it uh, like that and the book can close and take it out of her hands. It's a little book. Looks pretty cool. Nice accessory. And she has two different faces. Um, the bottom here looks pretty cool. I like how it's like pink mixed in with clear. To make it look more like a you know a ghost or a vaporous ghost, a full vapor apparition, but you can pull her hair off and that's her normal sh face. And here's her other face. Let me put her uh, put her hair on so you get the full effect here. And that's what they included. I thought that was pretty cool. It's just a white version of what like the Dana hair, but uh, pretty cool. Rawr! Rawr! That scared the crap out of me when I was a kid, the way she looked. Um, pretty funny, though. Cool figure. All right, next figure is the zombie cab driver from the first movie. Um, pretty cool. Like how he's got this, this cool hat, like a scene in the film. But what's really cool about this hat is you can reposition it and reuse it for, like, different things. You can make it look like a beret. Like, ha-ha, I'm a French zombie cab driver. Put it on the front and make him look like a uh, regular New York cab driver. Hey, 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 man, where you want to go, man? Fourth, second, third? Yeah, let's go, let's go, huh? Probably a terrible New York accent there. But that's him. He's cool looking. Ah, oh, everybody's favorite, Slimer. And what's really cool with the, uh, the, they gave me three different ghosts. There's Slimer. He's got, he comes with two hot dogs. Just put one hot dog in his hand for right now. Um, you can see that he has this clear little piece so you can kind of, Float him around. Ooh, I'm Slimer. <laughs> you can get slimed. Um, he's just like the Lego Dimensions uh, minifigure. Exactly the same. Same colors and everything. But uh, pretty cool. And then we have a blue ghost. Um, what's neat about this is there's like this... So inside the blue ghost and the pink ghost that you can see in a minute is this clear... Um, almost, it's larger than a Lego head, but it's very similar shape to a Lego head kind of piece. And that goes inside the blue ghost. There's another one for the pink ghost, and uh, I don't know why they did that, but that's what they did. The shape of the blue ghost and the pink ghost is pretty much, it's exactly the same. It's the same design. Two different colors and different face painting, like printing, I should say. He's got, um, three eyes and a mouth. Rawr! The pink ghost has two eyes and a funny looking mouth, but it's the same shape as you can see from the blue ghost. And the clear thing is inside there again. And two little hands that can hold hot dogs or whatever you want them to hold. And again, they, they had three of these uh, clear little pieces, which is cool because you can make the ghost kind of float around and have a lot of fun with that. Anyways, uh, pretty cool. That's all the minifigures. Some accessories are there's uh, three or four, there's four walkie talkies. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with these. And then you have two ghost traps that you can put in the containment unit. Two of those. Um, I have some, this is just something of mine. I have four of these little skeletons from the Prince of Persia sets. And uh, you know, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have little skeletons. Ooh, oh, my skeleton. Ah, oh, and then there goes, there goes Telly's head. And then here's my skeleton <laughs> laying on the bottom. Um, so this is the set. Pretty cool. What do you guys think? You want to get one now? It's I highly recommend it. It's a really really cool set. Um, I'm very happy I have this. It's fun to play with my kids. They love it. It's super cool. All the functionality, all the different elements of Ghostbusters 1 and Part 2 that they put in there. I really like that. I like the ghost minifigures. Slimer is awesome with the hot dogs and the zombie cab driver. 
and Dana and Lewis and the Ghostbusters and the little blue ghost, the pink ghost. Uh, this uh, little uh, skeleton you see shaking here is a piece that I added. It's just I have a couple skeletons from other sets, and I thought it would be kind of cool to play with them in this set. Um, it's so playable. It's so usable. It's form with function. It's a really cool set. I really liked building it, and I liked all the detail that went into it. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I'm always posting like the next thing we're going to do, or I'm teasing, or I'm asking questions to kind of engage with the viewers. Leave a comment below and a like, and make sure to subscribe. Let me know what you think of this set, if you have this set, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. If you wish LEGO would do something different, or maybe something else from the Ghostbusters um, world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.